Commission, and she is elected the men's diving coach of the year. And she said the teams finished respectively fourth and fifth in the nation last year. That's great. And this guy's off to a roll. Great. So, Cynthia Potter. Watched along with you, Walter Ray Williams. Back at it. Well, Vespi, he has the strike machine. Let's see if he can get it going today. And, of course, his last win was right here. Bob Vespi. Vespi, as I recall, came all the way through the field last year. Mm -hmm. Chris winning all four matches, and this year has improved his status a little bit, qualifying in the number two position. Just as Mark with a spare, this native of Albany, New York, very popular professional in the Florida area. He's now living in Coral Springs, eighth television appearance. A little quiet thus far. He'll get warmed up. You watch and listen. People often ask us how many times a bowling ball turns over from the foul line to impacting the pins. Vespi, I believe, gets the most. It's kind of a toss-up between he and Kelly Kaufman at 23 revolutions. You see Vespi qualifying second after six rounds and 48 games. Our statistician today, as usual, is Butch Soper, finishing 53rd. Got a little paycheck. Butch with 12 caches in his last 13 tournaments. Chris is the full approach of Walter Ray Williams Jr. Five-step delivery, 16 feet to the foul line, 60 pounds in his 16 pounds in his hand. Third game for Walter Ray today. Walter 262 average for his first two matches. His opponents a mere 213. Those aren't matches, those are mismatches. And right now he's off to the same pace as he started against his other two opponents. Three in a row. Now Bob Vespi. Bob 5'11, 170. Very fine athlete. About time for a break. Almost oh. leaves a solid nine here. Pin comes off the left sideboard and kicks it from behind. Boom, Vespi is first strike of the game. He's been in the pocket all three times, but with the big strike ball, he needs to stay light. Scatter the pins. I ask you, friends, he's appealing. I agree, 7-10. Well, the big hook ball is not paying dividends today. We saw Amleto Monicelli struggle with it. Bob Vespi, every ball around the pocket has nothing to show for it. So we're in our third game. That's Ray Williams Jr. with a 33-pin lead on Bob Vespi in the semifinal game. Let's go now to our On the Approach reporter, Parker Bone the third. Thank you, Chris. I'm here with Dave DeAntremont. Dave, is the kitten in you going to play today, or are you going to let the lion out of your cage? Well, people have accused me in the past of being kind of low-key on TV. Uh, if I can get a good read off my practice shots, make a couple good shots at the beginning of the game, I think I'm going to open up the door and let a little bit of lion out today. There you have it, Chris. All right. And trouble for Walter Ray Williams. First time today we've seen him out of the pocket. Deadeye lets off on the speed a little bit. Boy, is he aggravated. Four, six, ten. He'll just go for the six, ten. Now leading by 28. After an open frame, his opponent Bob Vespi shoots in the fifth frame.
Come on. Big hook ball will just not work. Move what hap happens is it's seriously sensitive to the dry part of the lane. As he goes way out, and the ball just kind of rolls out as it gets towards the pocket. Well, right there, mm. Bob Vespi makes a major, major error. He leaves the 10 pin and then gets up quickly changing balls and lets the ball slide off in the channel, missing the 10 pin. Now he has just 76 through the fifth. After Walter Ray gave him that opening in the fifth frame, Vespi gives it right back. He's in trouble. His best strike of the game, the defending champion. Let's watch again. Sticking a little on the approach, just lets that ball slide completely by the 10 pin. Once the ball hits the channel or the gutter, it's out of play no matter what happens. So that 10 pin does not count. Walter Ray in disgust turned his back on the lane. Four pins stood and then it went down for a strike. I think that was from kind of a, a premature cheer by one of his fans. Uh, mm -hmm. Probably sitting in a position where they can't see him very well, and Walter was still in the bottom of the swing, and he can capitalize on it right here with a double. Chris, remember what he said to you in Portland when he defeated... Uh, Brian Voss, you see him going high here, and then lost to Randy Peterson. He mm -hmm. said he lost the lanes, and it looks like that's happening right now, but he has a big enough lead in the match against Vespi to afford to take a few chances and experiment. Mm -hmm. So again, using the spare ball. Our semifinal match. You know, there's a desert oasis in the Tucson area. It's called the next week. This week, we're in Tucson. Here is Bob Vespi, turning back 39 with a strike up. That's fair. I guess it is. <laughs> the way it should be. Well, Bob Vespi, an excellent bowler with probably a, one of the most powerful strike balls in bowling, but right now he's not using that ball the proper way. He can't throw it about 15 miles an hour down there and just hope it sets up in the pocket. He's got to move out. He should have taken a little lesson from Walter Ray. Right. Okay, Bob Vespi has a habit of shouting at pins, and he says it's for a good reason. Listen. Well, it's a good way to vent my emotions against my opponent and, and let them know that I'm here to play and I want to win this tournament. Well, he shouts at the pins, but they're not listening today, so he's in real trouble. <laughs> 